If you are running a agency or a coaching business, you probably have either setters or closers. Well, you at least have closers. Maybe you're the closer, but maybe you bring in on setters at some point as you scale out your business. And I just finished working with a client who needed to be able to track the commissions to pay these setters and closers as deals come in, who set it, who closed it, how much should everyone get paid, especially if there are payment plans or there's recurring payments. This can get very messy very quickly. So what I'm going to walk you through in this video is what I set up for them, they were using Go High Level in this case, but the logic and the concepts are the same. And I'm going to show you the Zaps as well. In this case, I use Zapier. But again, if you understand the principles, the concepts, and the logic, you can do this also with Integromat slash Make, what it's called now, Pabli, whatever you're using. It's all about the concepts. In this case, and what I've found with multiple clients who are using different CRMs is we are going to need to use a intermediate Google Sheet. That's where we're going to be pumping a lot of this information and that's where we can say, we know who the setter was, we know who the closer was, calculate the commissions, as opposed to doing it in, say, HubSpot with custom calculated fields and go high level, it's reporting isn't always the best, it's a bit limited. Um, and that's why I find it's often best to just send all the transactions, all the deals into a Google Sheet, and that's how we can do the commissions and things like that. If we start from the top left, so this is the full flow built out, and you can probably read most of the things here, but... Logically, if you have setters on the team, you want to start by having each of them have their own individual links. This is how we're going to know if a call comes in, who booked that call. So let's say these are individual links. Each setter has their own personal link. And it's just going to be part of their responsibility to use their link because that is how they're going to get paid their commission and know that that deal or that lead came in because of them. And you can see here, the booking comes in. We catch those bookings coming in. We are looking who is the setter and that's obviously based on which link caught that booking we set that setter's name in go high level and then finally as i said an extra step is we are putting them into a google sheet and all we need there is the deal name the email of the person who the setter was we know who the setter was now because we know which link that booking came in on. So we can set the custom field that we have as a setter name as whoever. And then also what I always like to do at the end is have a Slack notification being sent to the group saying new set because you want to know that this book calls coming in. It's good for team visibility. And also if a booking comes in and people don't know who the setter was, then you can say like, oh, hey, by mistake, I used the wrong link or, oh, they actually came in through a personal conversation. So I booked them in on my private link. It just creates much better visibility and also excitement because people can see book calls coming in as opposed to everything's just quiet and stuff like that. And if you look at what that zap looks like, in this case, in high level, what we're doing is high levels workflow automations get a little bit messy if you want to do things like ifs and elses and things like that. So what we do is we have one automated workflow in high level that catches all bookings, no matter what, all bookings. And we use the webhook to send them to Zapier. So this catches all incoming bookings from Go High Level. And then in the second step, we are using a lookup table. I'm not going to expand this out because it's going to show names of the people. But we're going to use the formatter tool, utilities, and then lookup table, where we can say, if we know it was this link, give us back that set of name. If we know it was that link, give us back that set of name. And that is obviously what we do in the next step of updating, adding that lead and that contact to go high level. Even though they already are there because they booked through go high level, we're updating the set of name. We send the notification and we're creating that spreadsheet row, as I said. Now, if we hop back to, okay, now we've got them in from setting, what happens when the deal gets closed? So the great thing is every CRM, go high level, HubSpot, they all have these different ways to track if a deal was moved from core booked to closed, for example. So in this case, the trigger could be that the deal was moved from one slash closed, or what I've done for other clients in some cases is we create a simple Google form, Google form, type form, whatever, where they enter the details of the deal, the amount, the total value closed, cash collected, because that helps with reporting and stuff like that. And that's what kickstarts the automation in Zapier. Again, I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then the, the beautiful part here is we look up the ID 
we find the original row in the Google Sheet that got added earlier here, we look that up using the, the high level ID or the email, something unique. So we find that row, we mark that deal as closed, add the deal value, and then also we send a closed deal notification to Slack. Because also if you set someone and you see it got closed, and for some reason the setter name wasn't assigned, you'd be like, hey, I actually set that person. You can see the conversation was here, for example. So that is what the closing deal aspect looks like. And what that looks like is go high level deal, move to closed, just format the currency to USD. We want to make sure it's consistent, send the notification, find the row in the original Google sheet by the high level ID, and we update the value in the spreadsheet as well to close. And obviously in the spreadsheet, you just have custom columns that are calculated commission, which is X percent of total deal value. And then also for the closer, X percent of the total deal value. Now, let's say it's a recurring situation. So there's recurring fees coming in. What I found very, very helpful, especially if you have Stripe and PayPal, there's multiple accounts going on, is you pump all incoming notifications to another central spreadsheet. For example, you have income and Stripe payments, income and PayPal payments, send that all to a income and payments sheet. And we just make sure the data is consistent, the description, the value, the amount and everything. And the cool thing is, because we have the email for the payments, or we have maybe an ID that we've saved, we can then go back to the original sheet of who the setter or the closer was and use a VLOOKUP, for example, in the Google Sheet to find who the original setter and closer were, and then we can attribute the commission to them. So that's really, really cool. And you can see that's that last step, custom columns calculate the commissions. So hopefully this walkthrough was helpful. This is something that I've seen a lot of companies I've worked with struggle with especially if they're agencies or coaching businesses and they start bringing on setters and closers as they scale. So if you want this type of thing set up for your business, I mean, you can just go do this yourself. But if you just want someone to do it for you and you're trying to better track and manage all the stuff with your sales and closers and your sales process, you can obviously speak to me. That's what I do is I automate business operations, and sales operations to help you scale all the way up to where you want to go and make it as easy as possible, to save time in the process. Otherwise, if you just want more tutorials like this, you can obviously just subscribe. And if you drop any comments, I always answer as best as I can. If you have any ideas, I can always also drop another video around that.